Getting started with the Yardstick 1 for sub 1 gigahertz hacking. All that and more this time on Hack 5. This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. My name is Shannon Morris. It's your weekly dose of techno lust. I am so stoked about this episode. This is really exciting because today we are looking at the brand new Yardstick 1. Ta-da! <laughs> this is pretty awesome. Uh, the Yardstick One is an inexpensive sub one gigahertz software defined radio transceiver aimed at security researchers. And in this episode, we're going to go over all of the good stuff everything from setting up the Yardstick One to what it can do, the RF CAT software, uh, cases, peripherals, setting it up in Linux, and then finally, Doing a little demo. Yay! So the yard in Yardstick One actually stands for yet another radio dongle. And it was created by Mike Osman, who you may know of Great Scott Gadgets. So you may know him from the Ubertooth One, the Hacker F1, both really cool projects. Uh, very great tools for security researchers and penetration testers as well pen testers, yes. and it was originally based on the Torcon 14 badge, which incorporated a Texas Instruments, you may remember the calculators, a CC1111. So it's the same chip found in the famous pink pager, the IMME, and this was the toy that pop was popularized by Mike and Travis Goodspeed because of its hackability. That's right, real men carry pink, pink pagers. Essentially, <laughs> it is a software-defined radio that operates officially in the lower 300 megahertz, the lower 400 megahertz, and the 900 megahertz ranges. Mm -hmm. Now unofficially it can actually achieve a little bit greater bandwidth and uh, this is pretty awesome because much of that spectrum is the unlicensed ISM or industrial scientific and medical band, you know, that basically unlicensed spectrum where we can have a lot of fun. 433 megahertz in region one, that's Europe, Africa, and Middle East. Uh, 915 megahertz if you're in the United States or South America or Greenland. I guess Canada as well, America's hat. <laughs> uh, it's pretty cool. This will do data rates up to 500 kilobits per second and has built in support for some really common modulation techniques such as amplitude modulation or I guess amplitude shift keying, on off keying, a few other types of frequency shift keying and minimum shift keying. Good hmm. stuff. Then I stroke my beard. So uh. this is really fun because those are the frequencies and modulations used by lots and lots of different things that th thus far hasn't really been properly audited by the security community. It's only now that things like the SDRs and the Hacker F1 have become mainstream that we've started seeing attacks against things like automotive keyless entry systems, uh, you know, garage doors or what have you. So a few yardstick friendly sub gigahertz projects that come to mind are hacking doorbells, uh, those garage doors opener openers that I mentioned, fixed key remotes, which are super fun. So I actually know that Darren and I have been looking at some of the equipment that we use here in the studio, mm -hmm. such as this little remote. So hopefully we'll have a remote or a, an actual segment oh, over this little remote I'm timer sure eventually. sure next week because it's looking good. I've already captured the waveforms. Wow, it will so happen. much cool stuff. And let me tell you, um, what's going to actually make this auditing system like ridiculously accessible to security researchers is the fact that it already has pre-installed RFCAT firmware, and that's courtesy of Atlas. If you're not familiar, RFCAT is it's sort of like the CAT program, or well, NetCAT if you're uh, more oh. familiar with that on Linux. I know, it's good stuff, you know, standard in and out. That's it's, cool. It's written in Python, and it is super simple to incorporate into your own projects. As you'll soon see, it's a ridiculous easy library. And it's specifically designed to interface with these CC1111 dongles. There's the Kronos dongle, there's an EMK dongle, but now there's an actual yardstick one specifically designed for security researchers <laughs> dongle. And having the RFCAT firmware pre-installed makes it so much easier since you don't need to flash it with like Pogo pads or anything, um, you know, and actually if you do want to flash it, the CC bootloader is pre-installed as well. So you can actually reflash the firmware without needing any additional hardware. You can just do right over USB. It's good stuff. So before we actually get into the setup and the demo, I do want to talk real quick about some of the differences between the Yardstick 1 and the other CC1111 dongles. So most notably, it fe it features an SMA connector on it for external antennas, which is super great. Yeah, just like that one. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yay! So we're going to, going to either use an ANT 500 telescopic antenna, which is really great for general purpose, don't you poke me with that thing, or one of our GSM antennas tuned to 900 megahertz. Mike also put a lot of work into improving the sensitivity, and he added an amplifier and low-pass filter to keep it clean while operating at 900 megahertz. So it also features programming test points and expansion headers, and lastly, I did want to mention that similar to the Ubertooth One, it will fit into a generic plastic case, so, so you could find one online or you could 3D print one yourself. Yes. Yeah, just like that little one that, I think you printed that yesterday in under like 20 minutes. I know, the STL files are up on uh, MeX so GitHub, so thanks for that. Yeah, I know so that we'll there's that a part on Mauser as well. That's so, awesome. Or you could just heat <laughs> shrink it. Uh, so now with those basic ins and outs out of the way, we are gonna go ahead and get our Linux set up and start using it with our very first program with RFCAT and the Yardstick One. We're gonna do just that right after this quick break. Domain.com and .club came to Hack5 with a great idea. Build a club all about learning stuff, making things, and having fun. So we've been hosting open houses at the Hack5 warehouse through hackhouse.club. And with the help of Domain.com and .club, we've taken it to the next level with the Quadcopter Arena of Doom. From LAN parties, drone racing, and battle arenas, to 3D printing, software-defined radios, and let's not forget barbecue, hacking is just plain better when it's social. Doc Club gets it, and they are the perfect social domain. Whether it's IRC or clubs in RL, it's all about coming together and having fun. So what better domain to do it than a Doc Club? It's perfect because a Doc Club is universally and globally understood. So if you're looking for the ultimate social domain, consider a Doc Club. So join us this summer in the San Francisco Bay Area and bring your mini quadcopter to the arena for DroneBattle.Club. We're setting up the leaderboard, so show us what you've got. And what's your Doc Club? Let us know and we'll share it with the Hack5 audience and help spread the word. Get yours over at Domain.com slash club. They're only $9.99 a year and there are thousands of great domains available. And be sure to use the coupon code HAK5 to get 15% off and let them know we sent you. So when you think domain names, think Domain.com. We are back and we are ready to get started with the Yardstick One setup. So I'm going to be using Linux, I believe Darren is as well. So on Linux, you're going to need the latest copy of RFCAT from Atlas's repo. You can find that over at bitbucket.org slash Atlas of zero doom. Doom. Slash RFCAT. Slash RFCAT. <laughs> so you're going to click downloads and grab the latest RFCAT gzip or just compile it from source and then untar the file through the directory or terminal, whichever you prefer, and CD into the directory in your terminal. So now you can ensure that you have the dependencies, which are Python, Python USB, which is Python-USB, and libUSB. So for my distro, I needed to do an apt-get install Python-USB. Uh, that's for Linux Mint specifically, which is what I use on my computer. Did you have to get that? No, it's the same thing. You know, same I'm running thing? Ubuntu 14.04. Okay. So then it's just a matter of issuing sudo python setup.py install, and then finally, sudo rfcat tack r. And actually, if you read the oh, readme, you can find other ways to do this rootless, uh, just a matter of setting a udev rule. And we'll but just those commands in our show notes too. Right. Quick and dirty though, just to get started. Uh, here you're gonna be pre presented with a uh, interactive environment. It's all based on Python. Let me show you that here. So on my laptop, I'm gonna go ahead and run sudo rf cat tech r, I guess it's dot slash because I'm in the directory. And there we go. I already Yay. have my dongle plugged in. Otherwise, it'll be it'll say waiting for dongle. And this is the greatest thing since frequency hopping. And it really is because <laughs> this creates an object called a D for dongle. And you can fondle it with all of these different functions fondle that are it. built in. Right. Did you really just say that? That's what you do in Python. You fondle your dongle, or functions at least. Um, this has the already built-in stuff uh, to, to ping, to discover, to transmit, to receive, to set your modulation, and the data rates, to set your frequency frequencies. So um, as you can see, if you already have an idea for a program, this Python library is going to make it super ridiculous simple to communicate with the Yardstick One. Yeah. So that's awesome. So I can also see my current configuration by issuing print d ripper radio config. So I'll go into rfcat. So that's sudo rfcat tac r. Whoops. And it's waiting for your dongle, so we'll go ahead and plug that guy in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 
there we go. Okay, cool. So you can see all the different functions that I can use in here. And I'm going to go ahead and type in that very last one at the bottom. Cool. All right. And there we go. And if you scroll up, you can see all of the different information about the modulation technique and the, uh, the frequencies that you're operating on. It looks like you're on yeah. FSK. It looks so like you're in the 300. It recognizes my yardstick one up here. And then you can see the frequency that I'm currently on. Very cool. Rad stuff. And then to quit, it's just a matter of issuing uh, quit, open and close parentheses, because you are, in fact, in a, um, well, you're in Python, you're which in is Python. pretty rad. Yeah. So I'm going <laughs> to go ahead and do that here. And there we go. And I'm out. Woo! -hoo. Sweet. Uh, so with that, you know that um, now the Yardstick 1 is working happily with the RFCAT library. So this means we can now start actually using it with a program that has specifically been designed with this library. And you know what I thought? Awesome. As far as like hello worlding this thing, what better way to do it than an ephemeral IRC? Oh my gosh. It's not actually IRC. It's, it's chat. Totally like Netcat. It's, yeah, I know, right? It's, <laughs> it's chat. I love chat. Uh, I've been on IRC since the 90s. Uh, never been in Flame War. Uh, team root the box. <laughs> right. <laughs> wrote an epic chat client uh, called TorChat. It was actually using the TorCon 12 badge, and this was for a contest at TorCon a while back. And we have since uh, forked it and added support for the Yardstick 1. Hmm. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and start this off. So I'll start, um, I'll return to my home directory with CD, of course. So just, you know, CD, yay. And then I can clone the GitHub, which is over at github.com slash hack5 slash torchat. So that is, so now I can CD into torchat. And then I can sudo dot slash torchat, oops, not capitalized, torchat.py. Hit enter, and now I'm in the, what is this called, <laughs> ncurses? Yeah, it's an ncurses <laughs> interface. It's a text cool. GUI. It's good stuff. So I can press U to create a username, which will just basically bring me down to the next cursor row. So I'll put in snubs, of course, for my username. And then I can simply write to other people who are also logged in. Hmm. Hey there, Shannon. <laughs> huh? Check I that got out. It. Yeah, I got it on my computer. How's it going? There we are. Aww. And we have, this is so cool. We so have cool. an ephemeral chat. Uh, you know, just you can see that there's a few other options. C will allow you to change the channel. F yeah. will allow you to change the frequency. Uh, I'm just so happy. Do I like pandas. So do I. Pandas are great. It's like the best chat session ever. I love turtles too. OK, so anyway, <laughs> as you can see, this <laughs> is pretty rad. And actually, um, what's more, uh, if one of the clients in this chat room has internet access, regardless of whether the other clients do, the other clients can actually request web pages through that first client with the Wait, W option. What? Yeah, I know, it's crazy. It's just what, They were like, well, we finished the chat. Might as well add some cool new feature creep options. That's uh, pretty awesome. Uh, so already you can imagine, like, wait a second. You know, Remember that box that was like, like pulled from the latest DEF CON, they were like, oh, we, we can't show it. Oh, so yeah. Have, right. You could do stuff like that. Um, and since it's Python, I know that it would be stupid simple to implement an AES encryption with a pre-shared <gasps> key. I do know this because Seb already has. It's, uh. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> hey, this would be awesome. Guess yeah, what? Guess what? Done. There. It's Python. <laughs> Gosh, you're like a USB I, I'm, key developer. I am so excited about <laughs> already this. Already been done. <laughs> I can't wait to start hacking on this. Yeah, so I think that's about it for getting started with the Yardstick 1. We will be following up with more on this since, as you can see, it's really Really super accessible and when paired with an RTL SDR, it's a really awesome combo for unlicensed licensed spectrum security research. I know Darren <laughs> and I have already been yes. working on some really fun hacks, the various bits combo. around the warehouse, like our doorbell, our studio equipment. So stay tuned for all of that. It's going to be really, really fun. And of course, if you like what we're up to, you want to support the show directly, you can pick up some of the awesome, really cool pen testing gear like the USB rubber ducky, which we mentioned, the land turtle. Of course, the yard Stick One is one of those as well over at hjkshop.com. Right, and you can also find the links from all of the stuff that we've talked about today in our show notes. You'll also find all of our past episodes over at hak5.org. With that, I'm Darren Kitchen. I like pandas. That's Shannon Morris. <laughs> Trust your technolust. <laughs> what are you doing? No, no. Stop it. Mine's bigger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mine's tuned to 900 mega. <laughs> I think it's That's only a quarter awkward. wave. <laughs>